This Cajun chicken pasta is one of my favorite recipes to make. It's creamy, cheesy and spicy, just the way I like it. Marinate the chicken with all the spices on the screen for at least half an hour. Shallow fry both sides until it's well done. Just look at that chicken. Now in the same pan, add in some crushed garlic and red chili. Saute them for a minute or two. Add in one chopped onion and let it cook together. To this, add in tomato paste and chili paste. Give it a good mix and add in one diced tomato and yellow bell pepper. Add in 1 cup cream and 1 cup pasta water with chicken stock cube. Once it starts simmering, add in rest of your spices. To this, add in dried parsley, chili flakes and grated parmesan. I also added a blend of mozzarella and cheddar to make it more cheesy. Add in some salt to taste and finally you can add in your cooked pasta. Combine it well with the sauce. This is starting to look really good. Now you can plate it. It smells amazing and you won't be disappointed with this recipe. It's so flavorful. Top it off with the cooked chicken and enjoy. Frozen garlic bread, how about 15 minute garlic bread? Medium bowl, one cup of salted butter, soften. A quarter cup, fresh chopped parsley. Four cloves of garlic, crush them all. Mince in half cup of parmesan. Mix together till it looks like this. Shabbat. Cut in half, lengthwise. Take half your butter and just spread it all, all over. Don't they just look beautiful? Baking sheet, garlic bread on, into the oven, 400, for about 10 minutes. Take it out, oh my lord. Oh, le petit croissant. Oh my lord, I'm about to bust. A little bit of flaky salt, black pepper. She's just right and juicy. <laughs> because of this recipe, the grocery stores in Finland ran out of feta cheese. Here's how to make it. Add tomatoes, olive oil, salt, and pepper to a baking dish. Then add a block of feta cheese right in the middle. Bake at 400 for 35 minutes. When it comes out, add some fresh garlic, fresh basil, and give it all a good mix. Then add some of that cooked pasta right on top and give everything a good mix once again. And then it's time for the taste test. So good. Is it possible to make Krispy Kreme donuts in the air fryer? Let's dust our cutting board with a little flour and then roll out our dough. Now I actually use mason jar lids to cut out my donut shapes and the tips of my cake frosting for the donut holes. Spray with a little bit of avocado oil and air fry at 350 degrees for eight minutes. Frosting was a third cup of powdered sugar quarter cup of heavy cream, and a quarter cup of condensed milk. These were light and fluffy and so delicious. Follow me for more recipes. I told y'all this food at home. Let's make some hot wings. I love me some wings. How about you? Make sure your wings are dry and rub them with some salt and cayenne pepper. Heat up some oil in a deep pan. You'll know it's hot enough with some bubbles form around a wooden spoon. While that's frying, we're going to make the sauce. Microwave hot sauce and butter for one minute, or you can heat it on the stove. Y'all hear that, Chris? Mm-hmm. I tried to toss the wings in the sauce like they do at Hooters, but it was a fail. Yep, your girl worked at Hooters back in the day. Serve with some blue cheese and enjoy. Follow and share for more recipes. I said, do we have any spicy Latinas in the house? Huh? No, dude, you promised. Today we're making birria. Guess a birria tacos. I've seen so many people make this online that I had to try it myself. First and foremost, brown your meat. And for the marinade, we're gonna blend together some crushed tomatoes, vinegar, garlic, cumin, smoked paprika, oregano, chipotle peppers in adobo, and some guajillo peppers that I soaked off camera. I actually have a whole entire bag of these that I don't need. So yeah, comment down below if you would like a pepper. Thank you. Anyways, let that marinate overnight. And when I came back, sauteed some onions, threw the entire bowl in the pot, and topped everything Everything off with chicken stock, bay leaves, cinnamon, and whole cloves. I think I let it simmer on low heat for five hours. Bro, this part, good thing there's no audio because all you would hear is my hand is burning. Ah, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Assemble your tacos. Whenever people make reviews of this, I'm always like, yeah, yeah, you're exaggerating, buddy. Yeah, they were exaggerating, bro. These are some of the best tacos that I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I really hope you're not sick of the tortilla churn yet, because I have one that's gonna blow your mind. It's basically a fusion between a crunch wrap supreme and the tortilla wrap. To one corner, add your nacho cheese. Add sour cream to the opposite side. In the third corner, add your lettuce, tomatoes, and Doritos. And in the last one, add your ground beef and shredded cheese. 
Now just wrap it up, toast it, and enjoy. I'm sick and tired of it. Everyone's saying, oh my god, I love a frappuccino. Ah. We're gonna make one with actual coffee. Hot. One cup of sugar. Quarter cup of water. Mix together. On the stove. Heat medium high. Once melted, let that boil. Once it turns a nice amber color. Whisk in. Half cup of butter. Half cup of heavy whipping cream. One teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oh, brother. Pour into a heat proof container. Let that cool completely. So it looks like this. Blender. Two cups of ice. Half cup of cold brew. Three quarter cup of milk. Three to four tablespoons of caramel. Blend. More blending. Half teaspoon of sand and go. Caramel. You a frappuccino. A nice little whirl. And of course, some of that. Oh, I think we might have did something right here. Straw. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. Thank you. Who needs Starbucks, my God? Let's do some cooking. Today we're making onigiri, Japanese rice balls. Start cooking Japanese white rice. I found that jasmine rice wasn't sticky enough. To make the filling, add canned tuna, keeping mayo and sriracha. Use your filling of choice, I even use mashed avocado. Wet your hands with a little water, add some salt, flatten your rice and add the filling. Roll in ball and make a triangle shape. It's helpful when you mold using the sea part of your hand. Just cut seaweed in small pieces and add to the rice. This helps prevent rice sticking to your hands when you eat. If you want, you can also pan fry the onigiri in some oil and add some teriyaki sauce and enjoy a crispy onigiri. Make Nutella hot chocolate. Oh baby. Combine about two cups of milk, a nice big spoonful of Nutella, a pinch of unsweetened cocoa powder, a pinch of sugar, a little salt, vanilla extract, and a splash of heavy cream. Stir this up over medium heat until well combined. Pour your hot chocolate into a blender, then blend at the highest speed. Coat the lid of your mug in Nutella. Pour in your hot chocolate. Add a homemade marshmallow and give it a quick torch. Then finish with some crushed candy cane. Hot chocolate just doesn't get better than this. Mmm. Okay, we've got another Code Ramsey. We're attempting his perfect scrambled eggs. Gordon, I hope you're watching now. Let's go! Starting with that heavy pot. Ouch! Three eggs. A little knob of butter broken up a little bit. I checked and our knobs are exactly the same size. The heat, just a touch over medium, and immediately begin beating those eggs. A constant beating, kind of like Gordon's time with Marco Pierre White. So about 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, constantly beating. And we'll do that three or four times. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Dude, I did not mean to do that. And back on. Clear those sides down so they don't stick. Now when they're looking like this, about a half tablespoon creme fraiche, stop that cooking process, season it up a little, and some fresh cut chive. Some beautiful toasted sourdough, touch of quality olive oil, and your perfect scrambled egg. I hope you like it. It tastes delicious, but we're gonna leave it to Gordon. Wait, sorry. Say what, Gordon? Could you say it one more time? Woo! You know I love you and I'm out! The chances of you seeing this video are so rare. There's 500 million users on TikTok and you will probably never see my account again. But I'm not gonna ask you to follow me. I'm not gonna ask you to leave a like on this video or comment. Caramel flan, I never had it, but let's make it. Okay, first and foremost, we're gonna caramelize some sugar and you wanna do this on low heat, not like me, because I accidentally burnt it too much and it turned out to be too bitter, okay? You want it a nice light color like this. Ah, bro, when I was making this, it reminds me so much of wax. Y'all grew up hitting the dab while I was hitting the dab. Maybe that's why I'm traumatized. <laughs> Anyways, to make the flan, three eggs, evaporated milk and condensed milk, and a little bit of vanilla extract. You wanna mix that until smooth and we're gonna transfer it into the same tray as the caramelized sugar. And we're gonna bake this in a water bath which allows it to cook more evenly. I baked it in the oven at 350 for one hour and it came out perfect. It was pretty late that night so I ate it the next day and I mean, come on. Anyways, who watched the new Attack on Titan episode? All I'm gonna say is Mikasa, I need that bro. Someone to swoop down in ODM gear and take me off my feet right into the sunset type of situation. <laughs> Today we're making Kane's chicken tenders, but 10 times better. 
If you want the recipes for the Texas toast and the cane sauce, they're already up on my page. But for the chicken, you want to marinate it in buttermilk, one egg, and one tablespoon of garlic powder. For at least one to two hours, overnight is preferred. Now in a separate bowl, you want to add a cup and a half of flour, a tablespoon of cornstarch, and a teaspoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, salt, and paprika, and one cup of Italian breadcrumbs. We're going to take our chicken from our marinade and dip it into our flour. Dip it into our buttermilk mixture and then into our flour again. Let them rest on a rack for 10 minutes. Fry on medium heat for about 6 to 10 minutes or until fully cooked. And you're ready to enjoy. I obviously served it with my cane sauce, the homemade Texas toast, and some fries. And the written recipes will be on my Instagram throughout the week. Picture this, okay? You're 11 years old. You walk into the mall with your parents. <laughs> Mommy, what's that smell? It smells so good. What's it called? Ah, my son. That's the smell of cinnamon rolls. They're one of the most delicious desserts to ever exist. Really? Can we try one? No, we have fish and rice at home. Huh? What does that have to do with cinnamon rolls? Bro, that was the story of my life. Anyways, today we're making cinnamon rolls. Make your dough and let it rest in a big bowl so that it could double in size. Ah, okay. Take it out and roll it into a big triangle rectangle. And yeah, the only thing you need now is unsalted butter and a combination of cinnamon and brown sugar. Roll your dough up so that it can be nice and chunky. And we're going to cut it into pieces with floss. Using floss allows you to get cleaner cuts without smushing the rolls. Okay, okay. Thinking outside the box. Now, I believe I baked it for 22 minutes. And to be honest, they came out extremely ugly. Like, there's no hiding that. But that's okay because we're going to cover it with icing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. By the way, guys, I was thinking, like, is this a pastry? or does Let's make homemade buffalo wings. Buttermilk pickle juice. Let these sit for half an hour. For our buffalo sauce, we'll add two thirds cup hot sauce, a stick of cold butter, one and a half tablespoons white vinegar, a quarter teaspoon Worcestershire sauce, a little cayenne pepper, a little garlic powder, and just a pinch of salt. Whisk over medium heat until well combined. I'm telling you right now, homemade buffalo is 10 times better than anything you've ever had at a restaurant or a store. For our chicken dredge, we'll go two cups potato starch, stop frying with flour, it's not crispy, a little garlic powder, chili powder, black truffle salt, onion powder, and pepper. First, we'll fry our chicken about eight minutes at 325, and now we'll fry at 375 till golden brown. Now that is crispy. Buffalo sauce. Doesn't that look heavenly? If you're ever gonna make a recipe off my page, this is the one. So this is the biggest mistake that I notice when I see videos of people struggling to make spring rolls. They take the rice paper and dip it into water over and over until it becomes pliant, but then it's all floppy and it's hard to put in the filling. So all you really need to do is get the whole sheet wet once. Then you add in your fillings and by the time you're done, the rice paper is pliant enough for you to roll. If it's still not as soft as you would like it, just wait a couple of minutes and it's good to go. The best way to roast your potatoes. Use small potatoes and boil until fork tender. Drain off the water and put them in a big bowl. We're gonna start with a generous amount of olive oil. You're gonna do salt, pepper. We're gonna go onion powder, garlic powder, crushed red pepper, fresh basil, fresh thyme. Get that all mixed together and dump it out on a lined baking sheet. Spread them out, give them a little room on every side. And then use a glass to smash them about a half inch thick. And then throw them in a 425 degree oven for about 30 minutes but you're gonna to wanna to flip them halfway through. And you're gonna end up with a soft interior, crispy exterior, the best roasted potatoes you've ever had. Let's do some cooking. 